aimed at re-regulating the banks as well as creating the right, I just restarted financial it. protection bureau. So you might have to reload. Sorry. What has been the result? Dodd-Frank has proven to be as weak as many critics stated prior to its passage. Moreover, the Consumer Finance, Finance Protection, Protection Bureau has very little bite either. Moreover, the Federal Reserve has, through its policy of quantitative easing, has poured trillions into the coffers of the banks, claiming the intent of creating liquidity. Nor has any Wall Street executive been convicted and sent to prison. Not worried about government constraints, Wall Street has gone wild in ripping off the public. This episode brought to you by Wells Fargo is only a drop in the bucket to what has happened since. In addition, the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau has probably exposed Wells Fargo as an election year ploy to further seduce Democratic voters, showing that the system is working to protect the public. All of this has led now to a gigantic new bubble, which will burst sooner rather than later, causing a crash that may make 2008 look like a bump in the road. What must be done? We know that the ruling class, its managers and politicians, will not implement policies to seriously reel in the banks, nor will either presidential candidate do anything to reverse austerity and massive tax, tax cuts for the rich, just the opposite. Believe it or not, there was a political party in the United States that had a solution that could possibly work today. In 1892, the recently formed Populist Party called for a nationalization of the banks, as well as the railroads and public utilities thus making them into public utilities. This would have made the banks accountable to their depositors while serving the needs of workers and local communities rather than the super rich. The populist forces were living in a period when the economy was being transformed from competitive capitalism to industrial-based monopoly capitalism controlled by corporations and banks. During that process, farmers, workers, and small business interests were being swallowed up by Wall Street and the railroads. In fact, this is what the preamble of the Populist Party's 19, 1892 Omaha platform stated about that. Quote, we meet in the midst of a nation brought to the verge of moral, political, and material ruin. The fruits of toil of millions are boldly stolen to build up colossal fortunes for a few unprecedented in the history of mankind, and the possessors of these in turn despise the Republic and endanger liberty. Does that sound familiar? By 1896, the Populist Party had dissolved into the Democratic Party, and much of its platform was co-opted into the two-party system becoming known as the progressive era. Today, unlike the late 19th century, early 20th century, there will be no reform because it is not in the interests of the ruling class. It is no, the ruling class is no longer committed to a national development model. In fact, the objective conditions today demand a global transformation, not just national reform like Trump both proposes. The United States economy is just too integrated into the world capitalist system. Finally what, we, finally, what we must keep in mind, we're living during a historical political opening where radical change is possible. But what is necessary is the mobilization of united workers armed with a political, the coherent strategy, an internationalist orientation, and a vision for the future. If that can happen when the financial architecture crashes next time radical change could happen thank you all right yeah yeah, all yeah. Right. thank you thank you george kill the bankers 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 now, one of the things that happened at this bank, which is criminal, is they buried thousands of workers. Thousands of workers were ordered 
illegally ordered to open up fraudulent accounts. Two million fraudulent accounts were opened up here. And also they opened up fraudulent credit card accounts. And if you or I did that, we would be in jail. If we opened up a fraudulent bank account, I think a lot of us would be in jail right here. But apparently for stuff, he gets $130 million. A special award for opening up fraudulent accounts. Is this a class system or what? What kind of system do we have in this country when the bankers violate the law blatantly and brazenly and they get a hundred and fifty million dollar payoff? <laughs> While the people lost their homes. Millions of people lost their homes through the Wells Fargo Bank. They stole homes. They 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 really are taking advantage and ripping off the people of America. Now one of the people that is here today and is also facing a struggle is Angela. Angela is a uh, worker at Evan at, in the post office, and she's been bullied as well. There's an epidemic of workplace bullying in this country. It's not just the Wells Fargo workers, and I don't, it's, it's, it's postal workers, it's public workers. Why are workers being bullied in this country? Why can't workers do their job? Well, in the case of the bank, of Wells Fargo Bank, they weren't allowed to do their job because they wanted to rip off the public, and they ordered them to do illegal things. So, welcome, Angela. Oh, I just wanted to say that there is an epidemic going on in the country of bullying workers. Okay? An epidemic is going on. An epidemic of thievery is going on. And if anybody tries to speak up, oh, they want to try to target those people, try to fire them, try to discipline them, whatever. On my job, I'm a steward. They wanted to get rid of me so I wouldn't be able to stand up for the rights of the workers. There is an epidemic of bullying going on, an epidemic of thievery going on in the country. When is the American public going to say we've had enough of this? We've had enough of bullying. We've had enough of thievery. When are we going to say we have enough? Do we all have to get ripped off? Do we all have to get in foreclosure court? Would it court be a realization of, hey, we got to make a change? What's it going to take? Millions and the people already lost their homes. People already lost the family farms. The banks foreclosed on their family farms. I just find it interesting. Now, they go in and fire our workers. When some big crooks at the top get the profit, 130 million, and they were the ones who start the process of bullying workers, like to open up the legal account. You mean those workers have to lose their jobs? Or why? Or the people at the top would lose their jobs? They can walk off with 130 million. Okay? There ain't no bank safe. Your money ain't safe in any of these banks. Well, Fargo, they get your bank tomorrow. This is a catchy bullying, robbing system. Now, wait a minute. What are you going to do when, you, when your bank rips you over? What are you going to do? Ask yourself that question. It's only a matter of time this system keeps rolling like this. Okay? What are you going to do? No, don't make any safe for these banks no more. These banks just running things. Who ever heard of 53,000 workers lose their job because they were bullied to open up the illegal accounts? And they're the ones that's fired from the people at the top in the pocket of 130 million? Come on, America, what's wrong with you? Your money ain't safe for these banks with a system like this. Your house ain't safe with a system like this. Hey, you and your family, how far y'all gonna have to get in debt to educate this one person? The banks gonna have all these little loans just pimping the young. And then what? Foreclosing on the older poor workers? wanted to shut the postal banks down look what happened look what happened okay america it's time for a change well, there we have it all right, all right thank you angela we got to connect we got to bring together all the working people all the workers are being bullied in this country we got to get our unions to start fighting back we need strong unions you know the union should be having demonstrations around this country jail the bankers I mean, who's been stolen from but the working people? The union members, the rank and file, we're getting, we're getting stolen from it. Our unions need to stand up and really fight to protect us. So our next speaker is Charles Minster, and he is a retired worker, but he's uh, fighting against the banks and the public banks as well. Welcome, Charles. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
To, to lead off with what the brother ended with here about the need for political change and, and revolutionary political change. We've had two revolutions in this society. We had the American Revolution, we had the American Revolution, and we had the Civil War and slavery. But we need to end wage slavery. We need to end this system where the banks and the corporations run the society, and primarily the one one hundred percent of big rich uh, CEOs who control these corporations and banks dictate how we run, how this society is run. They use all kinds of wiles of trying to uh, separate us by race or sex or uh, profession or job because they're in such a small minority they got to do this to continually separate us. But we can, or we can, we can join together. And it's going to take a party, a political party. There's no getting around that idea. We need a political organization that can direct this, direct the anger that people like Trump are exploiting. He doesn't want to direct that anger. He just wants to utilize that anger to divide. We need to organize to direct the anger that is in, that is welled up in this society against the ruling class of this society. And only the Revolutionary Workers Party can do that. Because they have, it's not a moral question, it's a pragmatic question. The workers have the power to stop this capitalist system and its tracks. If Muni shut down, if the bark workers shut down in this town, it wouldn't run. And there's a lot of things that we have to do to change the society so we can continue to live on this earth. Because let this capitalist uh, production without any control continue, as you see, they're destroying the planet. So it's become a life and death struggle that they could end this. Right now they're baiting China, they're, they're, they're looking at they're baiting Russia. These are two uh, nuclear armed powers. We don't doubt that the United States will use nuclear arms in a, in a confrontation since they're the only ones that ever use it. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty shaky right now. And these bankers know that. That's why they're stealing left and right to try to enjoy the wealth that they've stolen before the shit hits the fan. So I want to thank Steve for, uh, for uh, Thank you, Charles. Tell the bankers now. Tell the bankers now. And I'm going to let it go, folks. You have a nice evening.